Hello everyone, and welcome to this lecture series on mathematical modeling. Now, over the course of this semester, we're going to go through a number of introductory topics related to how we model biological, chemical, physical, and even sometimes sociological phenomenon using tools of modern mathematics. Now, as we proceed through the lectures of this class, we are going to start with topics in optimization. So these are finding, say, maximum and minimums. This might be related to maybe a profit model. Uh, and then we are going to pr uh, proceed into differential equations. So in particular, we'll look at dynamical systems, primarily in dimensions one and two. So this might lead us into some discussions of phase planes. And then, as we wrap up with differential equations, we will move ourselves into stochastic models. So these are going to be Markov chains uh, given pictorially down here. Now, the question that we should all ask ourselves is, you know, what is the goal and what really even is mathematical modeling? Well, in some sense, all of mathematics is modeling, right? Everything that's been developed through the history of mathematics has come from trying to understand some physical process or phenomenon, right? Even if things have grown to become extremely, extremely abstract, they are still rooted in reality. And you probably saw some of this already. Things like revolutions of solids that you might have seen using integrals in a calculus course, well, this is used to compute volumes of shapes that we might find in nature. Now, what we are going to use in this class are primarily techniques from introductory linear algebra, calculus, and a little bit of probability theory. So there is a little bit of an assumption on what you can do coming into this class, but of course, as we are developing our mathematical models, we are also going to talk about how to solve them. And therefore, you will be learning new mathematics as you go. Now, when it comes to mathematical modeling, there are a few things that we need to keep in mind. First of all, you are not going to be able to model everything in the entire world. We need to keep models sufficiently simple so that they capture phenomenologically the process that we are interested in, but are still simple enough that we could actually solve them. And this leads us into what we will refer to as the ABCs of modeling. So I have them written up right here. A stands for make assumptions. We are, every time we work through problems in this class, we are going to make assumptions. We are going to simplify things. Now, of course, if we make too many assumptions, we probably get ourselves very far from reality. So we need to find a Goldilocks zone when it comes to assumptions. Now, on top of that work, we are not going to pretend that we are the first people to try and do modeling. We are going to borrow work. Isaac Newton famously said that he stood on the shoulders of giants when he uh, came up with calculus. We too are going to stand on the shoulder of giants. Why would we try and invent things in a vacuum when we already have all kinds of, say, physical laws that tell us how velocity and acceleration are related to each other? And in particular, maybe something like uh, the physical laws, like Newton's law, that relates us between acceleration and the force acting on an object. And the final thing that we are going to do very, very well is criticize. This is probably the easiest thing that anyone can do when it comes to mathematical modeling because it doesn't require you to do any math. After somebody does the A and the B part here, we sit back and we ask ourselves, did this actually capture what we wanted it to? Is it actually telling us something interesting about the process? Or did we miss something? Should we go back to A? Should we add more assumptions in? Should we loosen up some assumptions and then repeat the process? So of course, criticizing is the easiest thing that we can do here. And criticizing when it comes to mathematical modeling is something that anyone can do from the sidelines. But again, we are going to keep in mind that we are trying to get at phenomena without getting at exact precision. If you want exact precision, the equations that you're going to have to work with will not even fit inside this room. Okay, so now you have a gist of sort of what we're going to do. Now, in the first lecture of this series, I'm going to give you the five-step method 
for approaching mathematical modeling. This is something we're going to keep with us as we walk through every sort of subtopic of the class, even if it's done implicitly as we go through. Now, I hope that you're going to enjoy this as much as me, and I look forward to moving through this content with all of you along.